Welcome to this week in Princeton Viking Sports here in VikeNation.org and ESP Media powered by Sidearm Sports. I'm Jason Griefer. We're joined by Princeton AD Joe Roberts. Uh, Joe, good to talk to you again. See that you're uh, back on the road this week. How are things up in Vike Nation? It's, it's been a great week, Jason, and we're really looking forward to this uh, this fall time of year as we're into postseason play. We're wrapping up regular season play and then yep. playoff football time. So what a great time of year uh to be a viking yeah a lot of things going on uh, up at princeton let's get into it uh, let's start with cross country talked talked last week about hosting uh the the, the meet there that went very well all 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 around execution wise and then also how your uh, team performed uh, now they're back in action this coming weekend and uh one, one final regular season tune-up before the gmc championships next week are they looking at this this meet coming up as fine tuning for the GMC, or are they looking at it as a way to try to, you know, get some momentum going into that, or maybe a combination of both? I think it's a combination of both. I think it, there is some fine tuning because, again, you know, we have some kids that that are going to be um, maybe not reaching that peak uh, that you think about in cross country, and so we've got to put them in an environment where they're going to be able to get some times and and show that improvement or that uh, stabilization this week. But certainly, you know, when you look at, when you look at the top kids, the top five kids or top four uh, of our, on both the boys and the girls side, it's, it's go time now. Cause uh, this will be that, that turning point for us where we really have to get ready for the conference and then obviously districts and then leading on into region and state. How aware are they that right now it's it's go time that we we got to turn it up even better than where we've been uh, coming into this week? You know, my guess is is they're they're fairly aware of what they need to do, but we're also fairly young. You know, we mm-hmm. talked a little bit last week about uh, a couple of the student athletes that are running for us that typically are not necessarily runners because we didn't have water polo in the fall. So, uh, you, you know, some of that component is a little bit different for them, but they're, they now all realize that, you know, this is, this is the time where we've got to take it up a gear. I know coach Campbell and coach Cobb both uh, are, are really starting to stress that, that uh, we, you know, it is about that gradual increase. It's about improving yourselves. It's about knocking t- um, seconds off of your, your time. But at it, it's the same thing. It's, it's, you know, you can't, you can't just rest now. You've got it. This yep. is where you got to go. It's about four weeks left of, of really pushing yourself to the limit. So they're on the verge of getting into the postseason. Let's, your golf teams are now in the postseason. They've got the sectionals uh, coming up here, and uh, it's been a tough year for the for your golf teams. I don't think anybody would uh, would uh, debate that. But uh, th- nevertheless, now that we're in the postseason, anything can happen. As as we've seen in whatever postseason you want to refer to in any sport. But uh, are, are they looking at this tournament as a chance to maybe surprise some people and maybe, if not, get the, the teams through beyond the sectionals of the districts, maybe get one or two of your uh, individual golfers through? Well, and, and you know, you, we've been hit, touching on this all year. It's now an individual game. It, it really, truly is. You know, yes, it, it, you know, you've got a group of girls and a group of boys that are going to go out respectfully, the girls tomorrow, the boys on Wednesday. Um, but we're going to post some scores and it really truly comes down to who we can put into what position to advance them into the, into the next round. And um, the girls last Thursday went up to Hamilton Elks and, and had a, um, a scrimmage round uh, final match with, with Lakota West and Middletown and kind of has their, uh, the coach at Lakota West, she does this annually. They have this little, recognize all the seniors from the girls and just kind of really pump them up and they get them excited and and I ran into Ariana the next day and she just she said she struggled out there you know but she also realized she knows what she's got to do she knows where she needs to put the ball she knows uh, where she needs to put you know to be in position to score yeah. she knows yeah. that that par and bogey are going to be okay um, because that's what's going to get us through to the next round. And it really, truly is grabbing your group, grabbing the girls, getting them all together, and just kind of insulating one another because now you've got to go out and shoot individual scores to get yourself through. Uh, it, you know, at this level, uh, it, it's, it's not where we're in a position where we're trying to post a team score right now. We're trying to see what we can do to support everyone individually to get them through. And the same for the boys. The boys will go out 
uh, and play a match with Ross at Whitewater and then, you know, step right in and, and go Wednesday. And, and, you know, to think about what Josh could do uh, this week, I think it, it really has a, he has a chance, but you've got to be able to get the ball off the tee. You've got to be able to keep it in play, which is something that we've all struggled with uh, this season is being able to keep that ball in play. And if you can keep the ball in play and you can, uh, you know, they certainly have the distance um, yeah. to put, to put it out there, but you keep that ball in play and you you can get up and down and, and par is a, a great score to have. And yeah, no doubt, especially given uh, some of the, some of the challenging courses they've faced uh, thus far, I put a bunch of pars together and, and, and we've seen that, that, that can be good enough. I mean, you can ask the professionals yeah. at, at some, some, at some courses pars, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, so hopefully they can, they can do that and, uh, and get some, get some golfers through uh, into the districts. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about your uh, tennis team here. Uh Tough GMC tournament over the weekend. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, really top to bottom. This league was very, very good uh, all year long. Uh, team finishes seventh. You had Brooklyn Bowen. We talked about her last week. Very good showing. Finished third in first singles. You had a nice fifth place finish in second doubles. So some good yeah. results in there for your program. Did that meet expectations, exceed expectations for uh, you and Coach Bruning? I think Coach Bruning was really um... – pleased with how the girls competed and how they finished I think uh, from a competitive standpoint I you know Brooklyn was probably a little bit disappointed on where she was however when you look at who she had to face and what she had to do to get to that point um, that's a heck of a showing and what that mm -hmm. does right there because let's let's take nothing for granted we're going to see those girls again yep. and we're going to see them in the sectional we're going and Brooklyn has the has the level of game that she can advance herself on into state. Um, that third place finish in the GMC is a proving factor of that. And so we're going to go back on Wednesday to familiar territory, back over to Mason uh, High School, which, you know, hats off to what Scott Stemple and the crew at Mason have done. That facility is incredible for tennis and uh, real appreciative that they allow us to use that facility to host the GMC tennis tournament every year for both boys and girls. And it's just going to be a great day. I think the weather's going to play into it a little bit as well. It's not going to be as cold. I think that that will really kind of rejuvenate the girls a little bit because they're used to battling in the heat all summer long. And I think it's going to really turn out to, to be nice and uh, yeah. should see some great things. And, and you know, uh, even from our doubles, uh, grabbing that fifth place, and that, what, a, what a great way to continue to battle. And again, it helps the overall team game. So it was all in all, it was a great opportunity for everybody. Uh, you, you look at the results there, and just from a just from an outsider's perspective, they look at that and say, "Boy, wow, this is that was a tough go." But uh, you can speak to this better than I can because you've seen it. Can you t tell us how just how good this GMC is in tennis? That you know, you're getting these results coming in. And, and it, it's you still have all these teams and individuals from other teams uh, still there to challenge you. Oh, it's loaded. I mean, you know, you look at what those Mason girls are doing and the Sycamore girls are doing right now. I mean, it, it is flat loaded. And and uh, yeah, I mean, I've I've had the the um, opportunity to be a part of some great tennis uh, with the Lexington tennis program, as good as it is under Coach Ron Schaub. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen high level tennis, but I'll tell you what, it's uh, from top to bottom, our conference delivers it night in and night out. And, you know, all of those, all of the teams in our league right now uh, have, you know, again, it's an, in, have those individual players that could really help a whole team. And you could, if you pulled an all-star group out of every one of our schools in our conference, <laughs> I mean, that's a heck of a lineup that you could yeah. put together. And so um, top to bottom, you know, yeah, you're going to have some schools that are just going to have, uh, higher end or heavier loaded players than, than others. But, you know, everybody's out there competing for the same thing. And, and the best part about it, no one's afraid. They're just going to go throw the ball up and go attack the net and do what they got to do uh, to keep advancing. So, I mean, I, I think our conference is going to really uh, be a force to be reckoned with in the state uh, once it comes time. You could probably make the same argument for the soccer programs in this league as well. Let's go there and let's start with the boys uh, they're going to take on Mason this Tuesday, and we're going to broadcast that match on Watch mm -hmm. HS Sports 
uh, TV. And we'll also carry the match this coming Saturday when, when the boys host LaSalle. That'll kick off at six. Again, we'll have it on watchhsports.tv. But let's talk about Tuesday. Mason's been the standard bearer in this league all year long. They, they're, they've got aspirations on, on a state championship this year. They're that good. Yeah. And uh, it looks like they're on their way to winning the, the league title, though. But for fans, you know, since we can't have a, a packed house at the stadium, fans may be getting to tune in to, on watchhsports.tv to see this year's team for the first time even though it is late in the season. They're going to get a chance to see him twice this week, as a matter of fact. Uh, what will Vikings fans expect, and what will they see from your team when they watch them on WatchHSports.tv? I think, I think we have got to come out with what I, uh, the phrase I like to use, aggressive defense. Uh, we have got to protect Cole Tuesday night. Uh, and, you know, we talk about that. It starts from back there and, and goes forward. Mm -hmm. And um, I think our kids are going to be real excited about that because they can go out there and do some great, great things and, and maybe even shock the comments a little bit Tuesday night. Um, but I think if we play real aggressive on the defensive side, that will keep that ball in the upper half of the field, which is where we always want it. Mm -hmm. And And by doing so, it might get a chance for our strikers to maybe get down downfield a little bit and score. So um, we've got to play a very fast paced, high intense game. Uh, we know that uh, we want, we want Mason to come in riding a little bit with a little bit of confidence of, well, well, this will be a quick and easy opponent maybe and take us a little bit likely. That would be uh, something that, that we would like to see. Although we know that's not going to happen because mm -hmm. they're so well coached and they're so well prepared. Yeah. But uh Maybe they'll sit back on their heels a little bit, and then we'll get out on them early and show them a thing or two, and and uh, come out come out on the on the upper end. But we've got we've got to really start with the defense, and I believe that as well. Saturday against LaSalle, I think we're going to have to really be prepared and play that aggressive defensive side and keeping that ball in the upper half of the field so that our offense has a chance to pass it around and, and score. So it's late in the regular season, and you've got Mason, who we talked about, has eyes on a state title. LaSalle is always good uh, out of the GCL. How good of a prep will this be for the postseason, given that we're just a couple of weeks away from that? And, uh, we, we talk about our schedules a lot. We talk about what we're trying to do and how our schedules are laid out that uh, we want to compete at the highest level each and every time. Yep. And this is just another example of that. Uh, you know, we're finishing pretty strong here at the end. And 95% and of that has to do with, as we've talked about here today, our league schedule. Yep. And the GMC top to bottom is as solid as it gets. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it just it, night in and night out brings a level of competition to our programs. And, and both both on on our side and their side, when we're whoever we're playing, uh, that that's really unmatched, and it's mm -hmm. really great to see. And and uh, there's just so much talent and so much ability, uh, and and these student athletes they work so hard. Not every conference does, and every student athlete does, but man sure. alive, you're getting a whole bunch of them across the board every night. And it's the same wing on the girls' side too, uh, and and they're going to get Mason this coming week, and. You know, the the girls team at Mason, they're on top right now. They might win the GMC uh, as well on that side. But I want to talk about your team. Kind of, a, kind of a rough patch they're in right now offensively. You look at the way things have gone the last couple of weeks, just one tally in the last six matches. Is, is, that, is that attributable to how good this league is? Or are they just out of sync offensively? Or, or maybe it, is it a combination of both, that the competition has taken them out of what they want to do offensively? Well, I think that's the answer right there. The competition has taken us out of what we are trying to do offensively because we spend so much time on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, nothing, no, no discredit to anybody that, that's going out there because our girls are battling every single day and our coaching staff is, is doing a tremendous job of getting our girls ready. We just are not where – the other teams are right now and we we are going to continue to work and continue to develop our skills to get to where where they are and i i think that down the road we're going to see some great things out of our girls soccer program i mean 
they are right on the verge um, of putting the pieces together that need to be put together. Um, again, we have the foot speed, we have the training, we certainly have the toughness. We just need a little bit more fine tuning on the skill development side that really shows uh, at the end. When you talk about spacing and you talk about passing the ball and you talk about uh, you know, being able to protect your on your defensive side of things and, and yeah. know, have that foresight to know where the ball needs to be. Um, those are the little intangibles that are coming that each and every day when the coaches have them at practice. Um, you know, part of it is also confidence. They need a little bit more confidence in what they're doing. Yeah. And I think they're going to get that at the end. And, and it makes it all the more difficult that there is seemingly no night off in this GMC. Never. As no, we, yeah. and you know, yeah, and the girls, we've talked about that. We're, and and some of it is, is you know, we probably are going to have to look at in, in long term, but there is never a night off in girls' soccer. I mean, our schedule is just so uh, – it's top-ended for them. And so what, what you think is, is man alive, then you get to the sectional tournament and you get a break. You know, yeah. you get a night off a little bit because – uh, even our, you know, the the Division two schools that we're playing, or the Division three schools that that we end up playing, they're the they're the high end, the top end of those divisions, and so mm -hmm. we're we're not giving them a, a moment to rest and 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 a moment to re recharge and rethink their position. They just got to get out there and go, and and that's the best part about watching our girls is how they bounce back, and and they haven't seen the success in the win column. But yep. they know that they're getting better, and they know that that everything they're doing right now is going to pay off at the end. And that's that's the best part about uh, watching what our coaches are doing with the girls is just how they continue to build them and teach them that that they have to put in the time and it has to be uh, it has to be hard in order for it to become successful. And and I just hats off to what our girls and what our coaches are doing. Let's see those results pay off by knocking off maybe yeah. the best team in the league this coming week. That would be a good start, I'm, yep. I'm sure. <laughs> let's yep. uh, let's move yep. on. To, let's talk about your uh, volleyball team. This is as busy as a week as you could ask for 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 a volleyball program. It's going to start uh, mo this Monday tonight, actually, tonight. against yeah. against uh, Wyoming. And Wyoming has owned the CHL for the last decade, it seems. So a tough one there. You got a, you got three other matches following Wyoming, which. You know, ends up with a sat Saturday's match against North College Hill, and we'll broadcast that yeah. one on WatchHSSports.tv. That gets going at, at about 11.30 a.m. Saturday morning on WatchHSSports.tv, so we'll have that one there. But nevertheless, four matches between Monday and Saturday. So this is a, yeah. a really grueling week for the team. So in your mind, what's going to be the biggest challenge for Coach Sparks and, ma and man managing not only the physical but also the mental conditioning of this team going into this week trying to get momentum going with the postseason right around the corner well it's the mental it's it's the grind um much like what we were talking about with uh tennis and golf the weather is going to change again we've gone from you know we've had some cooler days and now it's going to warm up again and so uh the, the girls are inside the gym and it's you know we've got to work on the mental part of it i believe they love playing uh, more than they do practicing, but don't we all? So you have sure. a big stretch of getting some games in. Yeah. Um, grabbing North College Hill in Wyoming at this point in the schedule, that's going to help us because we are sitting at a point of um, maybe seeing some different opponents and not just our league opponent who we're probably going to see again uh, in sectionals and districts, uh, potential matchups there. So so getting a little bit different flavor of, of volleyball, a little bit different style of volleyball, mm -hmm. uh, if you will, is going to help our kids a little bit because it's just a little change of pace there. Uh, having them streamed on uh, HS Sports is going to be awesome for us. And so, you, you know, I think that part of it all plays into it as well. So um, really excited about the grind that the girls are going to go through this week, but I think it's really going to help us you know, kind of get ready for the grind of the postseason play with the seed meeting this Sunday. And with those four games coming up, as you said, everybody loves the, the actual competition more so than they do the practice. Can that be a benefit to them if they don't have time to sit there and think about, you know, this game's over, okay, what's what time is practice the next day, that they have to get ready for the next opponent uh, in moving forward? Yeah, I think that's I think that's really good too, you know, Jason. I mean, you can kind of look at it like what they do in the professional ranks right now, you know, mm -hmm. or – 
uh, you know, Major League Baseball. Hey, we have a game on Monday, we got a game on Tuesday, and you got a travel day Wednesday, and you got a game on Thursday, and travel day Friday, and game on Saturday. You know, <laughs> it, it's kind of that same type of mentality. Or even back uh, in, in in my my days in college, that's kind of how we did things. You know, you'd play in a groups, and you'd have two or three games on the road, and you'd come back and have two games at home, and and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, I think that's that part of it is good too because they're not going to have time to reflect on anything that they did because we're not going to have time to rehash any of it. We got to go get ready for the next day, and and you just got to go uh, take what you did really good and take what our girls are doing and get keep that rotation going and keep that passing game going and and really fine tune the serving game and let's just go get ready because we got a game the next day. And we'll uh, be checking them out. Again, that's this Saturday on WatchHSSports.tv as Princeton hosts North College Hill. We'll have that for you starting at about 11.30 a.m. Finally, let's talk about your football team. They take care of business in the regular season finale against Fairfield. Win that game 40-23 to so to finish the regular season 5-1. and one. You're going to get Oak Hills in round one of the playoffs, and everybody who's looked at this league knows it's just been a tough go this year for Oak Hills. They've really, really struggled. But – on your side in this Fairfield win, saw your defense get going and scored twice in this one, and it really wound up being the big difference uh, in the ball game and in route to the win over uh, Fairfield, a 17-point win. Uh, what has Coach Daniels talked about as far as that breakthrough in general with the defense, and especially given the fact that it was the final game of the regular season heading into the playoffs? Well, I think we needed it. I think it's been a long time coming to see some defensive – uh, firepower and excitement that we have on that side of the ball. We just haven't seen it in that, at that level this season. And now bringing it out now was really uh, refreshing to see Fairfield's a heck of a football program. Uh, it's been a little while since we were able to knock them off. I believe 2012, if I remember correctly, uh, was the last time Princeton beat Fairfield. But uh, we came out with some intensity. We came out with some drive and some purpose. And I think the coaches did an unbelievable job Coach Gillum on the defensive side put our guys in a position uh, where where he knew what we had to do to stop them, and our guys stepped up and made big plays when they needed to be made. And and uh, you know, our the kids love that. They love being able to make a big play and watching Leroy run back and score a touchdown off of an interception or 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 causing causing a fumble or or any of those little tangibles. They get excited about that, and so it's just natural energy that comes through. And it, yeah. and it, um, conversely, it energizes the offense to do the right things. Yeah. Um, I thought we were a little bit slower on the offensive side this uh, this class Friday than we had been in previous weeks. Mm -hmm. But some of that had to do with just simply the fact that we were trying to create holes for our backs to get through off of that big line, that defensive line that Fairfield had. And it just took us a little bit of time to get on some of those reads. But um, Jalen Turner, another great – or, or Ari Turner, another great Friday night uh, running the ball for us. And uh, Makai Lynn just really, uh, as the quarterback, just kind of keying in on some great things. He's going to be a special, special quarterback for us. Had a really good year uh, he has yeah. thus far. Let's talk a little bit about the playoffs now. You, you draw the two, you get the two seed uh, in the playoffs, and uh, that's certainly a good thing. Of course, Lakota West, what a year they had. They were unanimous number one. But uh, it, what did you make of the draw when it came out? You, you get the matchup with Oak Hills, but then you, you kind of look forward. And I know, I know Coach Daniels isn't doing it. But from your perspective, if you get past Oak Hills, you may see Fairfield again in the second round, but you also could also see Elder in round yeah. two. This is a very, very difficult draw. What did you make of it when it was announced? I, I think we have the tough end of the bracket. You know, when you split the ones and the twos in the bracket and they, the, the bottom end of that bracket where we are, I think it's just loaded up top to bottom. And um, it's going to be a, it's going to be great. Uh, series each and every Friday night if we're fortunate enough to get through uh, like you said Oak Hills is going to come in they're going to come in with a purpose because here, here's here's the unique part about what we're about to do in football uh -huh. everybody gets to start over yep. you know that's that's what that's what we always talk about in basketball you can go 0 and 22 on the basketball season but everybody starts in in that tournament and everyone gets a chance to start over and refresh. So, so you can take all of the bad that you've had, all the struggles you've had during the regular season, the grind, the, you could have injuries, you could have what have you, but yet you get a reset. And so this mm -hmm. Friday night, it's just going to be a great matchup. 
Uh, it's going to be a, a great opportunity for us to do some things that we need to do. Again, we got to keep harping on the special team side of things. We got to keep fine tuning the the football on the offense, and we've got to really gear it up another notch on, on the defensive side of things. And we've got to stay within our game. You know, um, I think the coaches, Coach Daniels and his staff, are are doing a very good job of not trying to mix a lot of things up and trying to. You know, let's stick to our game plan. Let's stick to our process. Let's stick to what we have going. And I know this week at practice is going to be good to get them ready. And they will begin the playoff, John, again this Friday against Oak Hills. As we talked, as you talked about, the, the year, year half of the draw is loaded. You've got a potential matchup with Elder in there again, round two. St. X is in the other half of the bottom of the bracket. You got. Hamilton and Moeller down there as well. So there is not going to be an easy week this this year in the playoffs, that's for sure. And they'll get it kicked off again this coming Friday against Oak Hills. What a week it, it's shaping up to be. What a week it's been, Joe. Certainly appreciate you taking some time to join us here on the show to talk about it. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me, guys. You have a great week, and we'll see you uh, at these games. Absolutely. Three broadcasts coming up this week on WatchHSSports.tv. Boys soccer we'll see twice on Tuesday and Saturday. And then Saturday we'll also see the Princeton volleyball team on WatchHSSports.tv. Our thanks to Princeton Athletic Director Joe Roberts joining us this week. One more time for This Week in Princeton Viking Sports here on VikeNation.org and ESP Media, powered by Sidearm Sports.